So, yeah, I, I sound a little different. Yeah, quick heads up, guys. Uh, I sadly have COVID. That's why in this video, I'll sound like this and kind of have been a bit slower in getting videos out this week. It's uh, not been fun, but you know what? We're here now. Let's just jump into it. Did Thomas and the Magic Railroad ruin Thomas and Friends? I mean, it's an argument for sure. At some point, you've probably heard it's the movie that set Thomas down a quote-unquote bad path or dumbed it down for kids. You know, basically it took Thomas and Friends away from its more serious roots into uh, something that wasn't really as focused on the passion of trains overall. There's been plenty of arguments not only about the movie itself, but the characters, and let's be honest, most of them are pretty valid. If you're, say, just a railway series fan who loves the history of trains, you're not gonna like Lady nine times out of ten. The entire premise of magic is quite a daunting one in a series that seemingly takes itself so seriously. I mean, in summer, it is kind of talking trains. How serious can you take that? That's just my opinion, though. But really, let's think about this. Is the statement itself really true? Was it really a single movie that quote-unquote doomed Thomas? Is it really something so bad in the grand scheme of things? Well, in my opinion, no. And today I'm gonna tell you why. Now, keep in mind this video will largely be that, my opinions. You do not have to and honestly shouldn't agree with everything I say here. Have your own ideas, debate in the comments if you disagree. At the end of the day, it's all in good fun. But where does one even start with such a loaded question? First, let's start with our own question. Is Thomas and the Magic Railroad even canon? No. Not really, at least. I mean, it is to me, and it very easily could be slipped into an AU, I guess, but uh, overall, yeah, no, not really. Now, some characters are, for example, Lady, who comes back in Calling All Engines in a dream sequence, if you can count that as coming back, and Diesel Tin, who eventually became pretty much a mainstay. That's really it, though, and technically each have their own explanations for being on Sodor, you know, separate from Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Past that, I mean, Mr. Conductor, Junior, Shining Time, these are never referred to again. Splatter and Dodge as well, though it was rumored they would have come back a couple of times, say, for example, in Day of the Diesels, but ultimately were shelved for other character choices. It seems the overall events take place in their own little timeline or separate thing. And, you know, sadly, this is kind of another question, but how could something that's not even canon ruin a show? I mean, did it? Let's look at this statement directly. So Thomas and the Magic Railroad, though it isn't really canon as we discussed, is largely said to take place between season five and season six, but it isn't really canon. So, uh, oh well, let's just roll with it. So for this, let's look at season five and season six. Tonally are the seasons a little different. I mean, yeah, season five is the season known for over the top accidents and pretty serious stories. But I wouldn't say season six is too far off though. I mean, think about it. In season six alone, we have Duncan Duncan, Gordon takes a tumble, Jack Frost, Jack jumps in. There's plenty of bangers in season six as well. You know, maybe not as many as season five, but there's still classics. In just a second, let's think about this. What would Thomas and Friends ultimately be if it was nothing but over the top crash and accidents. You know, super serious plot lines, but all being told through the vessel of talking trains. Yeah, I'm basically saying you end up with tugs. Something that really didn't have a direct audience that wasn't already niche, and that probably wouldn't sell well to parents. I mean, it's sad, but some change was ultimately necessary, and no matter how you put it, it's not like it was so drastic it ruined the show. I mean, look at seasons 5 to season 6. I think they're pr I'm not on the same level, season 5 always wins, but season 6 is not that bad, if you get what I'm saying. I mean, either way, to me, it's just an argument that ultimately doesn't really hold up. It feels a bit unfair. And that kind of flows into my next point. Now, this is one that I'm sure has a legitimate argument against it or question to it, but really, I'd rather just present it as a point. You have to remember the Thomas and the Magic Railroad that we got was not the Thomas and the Magic Railroad that Brit wanted us to see. The movie itself was heavily changed, characters completely ripped, scenes removed, so many things got jumbled around, and I honestly don't feel like it's the most fair argument, again, in the world to make. I mean, at the very least, we know there would have been a very different antagonist in the form of P.T. Boomer. You know, plot lines with George and Cranky. Oh yeah, remember the diesel tin melting thing? Yeah. Then the movie was screened to a test audience who said, Ooh, uh, that, that little person there is too scary. 
remove him. Okay, say Brit and Mitten, and eventually we get what we got. And you know what? I can't say I even hate it as is, being the nonsensical mess it really is. Did I always skip the person and Lily scenes? You're damn right. Did it bother me that Lady never really came back and nothing really was ever addressed again from this movie? Yep. But to be fair, it got me into Thomas in the first place at just a few months old, and it kept me there. You know, all thanks to one movie that really didn't make a lot of sense, I found a lifelong passion. And again, it wasn't even the final movie, so could I really hate it? I, no, I, I just feel like I never could. Parts or aspects of it, absolutely, just like everybody else. But overall, do I think Thomas and the Magic Railroad ruined Thomas? No, I just don't think that's a fair statement. But hey, let me know in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? How do I sound? Is it really that bad? I'm assuming it's probably that bad. Yeah, again, sorry about that, but with any luck, I'll be uh, sounding my normal self and feeling my normal self uh, soon, so back to more content. For now though, and really quick, huge shout out to my patrons for making videos like this possible. If you want to join these beautiful people on screen, be sure to check the link in the description. And with all of that being said, stay safe. Do not catch this. It, this is not fun. I'm going to go drink some water and take a nap. Never mind, I'm probably going to work on Lady again because that that's just what I do. But you know what? I, I, I do need to sleep. If you do end up sick like this, you should be sleeping. And I should be. I'm going to get chewed out by my fiance for doing this. Now, technically, this has nothing to do with the video we just talked about and did. But, you know, I'm excited for this one, too, anyway. So we're going to talk about it. Now, if you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, you've definitely seen this model already. But I did make a short of it as well that ultimately... I got set to made for kids by YouTube. Thank you. So uh, you might not see it now. And sadly, we did lose the comments on that video, but I figured we'd make it up here and I'd show you guys where exactly I am with the uh, lady project. Now, some of you guys may be surprised by this, but this is technically the first lady, you know, I ever did in that really, really old video from, I think like maybe three years ago now. Well, this is the exact same Ertl lady. I just finally found a way to Motorizer. As you can see here, we have a Bill and Ben chassis that has been heavily cut down, pistons painted purple, and a new motor added as well. I believe this motor comes from the Hornby Rustin 48. So, yeah, that was really the only way I could get this thing to uh, fit in this. Yeah, a completely new motor, and currently she sits just like so. I'm thinking I'll, uh, instead of gluing her down, maybe make a magnetic fit, just so I can, uh, you know, maybe get to that motor if I ever need to oil her up. And uh, I did also add stone limited on the side because I didn't have any decals that were in cursive. So why not privatize her? You know, it's kind of cool to imagine if uh, Burnett had his own little railway. You know, he had the prettiest engines in the yard at all times. Like, come on. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a little sneak peek to Lady. Uh, currently, I have to weather her. I'm waiting on the faces to arrive and some other really small stuff, but it is nearing completion. And yeah, that's something to be excited for. And with all of that being said, I might go take that nap now. Or I'm going to weather her. Which one? I don't know. I don't know. I'm definitely getting chewed out, though. That is, uh, that's, that's going to happen. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Hey, Mario. That big old 500 pound some bitch, Bowser, just took the damn princess and used all the star power to put everybody in paintings. Now I need you to take your ass inside those paintings and recover the stars with a little bit of jumping, what? A little bit of punching, what? And a little bit of ass whooping, what? To save Princess Peach. And that's the bottom line, cause Stone Toad said so.